competitive. You know, mm -hmm. We've been practicing against each other for a long time now, so I think they're ready to compete against somebody else and hit somebody other than their teammates at this point. Any unknowns for you about how they'll perform? Or Not really any unknowns. I mean, still a lot to prove. Haven't played any games yet. Don't have a ton of experience playing in games, so when the lights come on and the stadium gets filled, how they'll respond and how they respond to adversity and how they respond to success is a big thing that we've been talking about. Depth chart's a depth chart, obviously. Mike, Mike was there in that first spot over Elijah. Do you, you kind of look at that as a rotation still? or? or yeah, I think I think there's still a chance for EB to do some good things. He's got some experience, probably the most experienced guy of the group. Mike's probably been more consistent than him up to this point, but he's had a stretch where they've gone back and forth, and it could be either one of those guys at any time. So I feel good about the situation we're in with those guys, with two or three guys ready to play at that position. And the other side with Akeem and Corey? Yeah, Corey's a good player. He's a proven player. Started 20-plus games in the ACC. Uh, he's been injured, so he hasn't practiced a lot. So hopefully we'll be able to get him up to speed and he can compete as well. Akeem is somebody who, I mean, his name's come up a bunch of times, but obviously this will be his chance to really show what he can do on a game day. Uh, what have you seen from him, flashy or otherwise, that you, know, you put him at the top of the depth chart? Uh, he's really consistent. Uh, then he has a unique skill set, skill set long, athletic. And it's important to him. So he's got a very instinctive and makes plays on the ball. It seems to always be in the right spot at the right time. What was it about Mike that kind of elevated him just to play throughout camp consistently? Uh, yeah, he did a really good job. And then we keep production. So tackles, missed tackles, the good, the bad, and we say the ugly as well. So uh, he had a lot of production, a lot of positive things. And so did Elijah, though. But we just kind of measured it off of that. And that's how we started. And that's how we set the depth chart. It's nothing set in stone at this point, but we feel good about those guys. How do you approach that? I mean, last year, Russell Douglas wasn't starting in the first game and ended up leading the league in the interceptions. How do you go into that first game as far as the rotation is concerned? And, and is that something that maybe you keep up all season long? Yeah, well, hopefully we have at least more than two guys ready to play. So we're going to throw them out there, see how they play, see how they respond, and just kind of go from there. Nothing set, uh, kind of get a feel for the game and, and kind of manage them that way. But obviously, get multiple guys in the game and each have something different that they're good at. So hopefully we'll be able to use their skill sets against Virginia Tech. Cook, you mentioned the good, the bad, the ugly. What are some of those factors you look at when you win charting this promotion? Uh, we, we do, you know, missed opportunities, which if you have a chance to catch interception or make a big play, obviously we do tackles, missed tackles, uh, mental errors and missed assignments are the biggest too because we can coach the techniques and in the most is another one. So if you're playing hard, or if you're doing what you're coached to do, rather than just freelancing and doing things like that, and which it's a part of football. Sometimes guys play really well when they do it like that. We're trying to teach discipline and, and um, we should all look the same. We're doing certain techniques and then just play fast, play physical. Sounds like you don't feel like there's a big drop off from the one guy to the two guys, either the cornerback spots, and that you'd be willing to you know, go with each go with either and yeah i don't think I mean, so i'm confident in, you know those top four guys that we put on the depth chart that they can all go in and compete at a high level and play winning football is that enough to get through a season uh we got some of the young guys have done done really well and have made strides and they competed obviously with corey being out for a while mm -hmm. some of those other guys jake long uh, fontez and sean mahone got more reps than they probably would have gotten and they did a good job and took advantage of the time that they were in there and i think that those guys will be secondary guys that can come in behind the guys that we have in those top two slots. How, Good. how have you prepared as a secondary, as a defense in general, for a quarterback who will be playing this first game? Well, we don't, it's a lot of unknowns for us at this point. We don't know his skill set. We don't have any tape on him. We haven't seen much of him. So we've kind of been more focused on playing mistake free and doing really well at the things that we do. And we feel like that, you know, what he does, we'll just respond to it and we'll be in good shape if we don't play with mistakes and play this one. Sure.